So you wanna trade stocks, options, or whatever for a living. In this video, I'm gonna cover some key, key questions that you better ask yourself and some numbers you need to know before you go on to this venture. So you wanna be your own boss, huh? That's awesome, that's great, that's a very ambitious goal to have, and when it comes to trading, it is something that is possible. However, it's not something where you just wake up one day and say, hey, I wanna become a trader for a living. There's some key questions you need to ask yourself, there's some very important numbers that you need to know or else you are destined for failure. Before I even get to mapping out these key questions and steps, I wanna first kinda of just give an overall assumption that I'm making, and that assumption is that you haven't just woken up one day and said, hey, I wanna be a trader. It's a situation where you've been putting in the time and effort, you've been paper trading, you've been putting together systems and strategies, you've been learning, you've been investing into your education, you've been doing all those other things already, and now you're thinking, you know what? I might wanna try this full time. I think I wanna give this a go. So again, that assumes that all that other stuff is taking place, that you're going through the right steps in terms of developing strategies, following rules, paper trading, you've invested into your education, all that has already taken place, but now you're approaching the area of, you know what, I wanna try this for a living. So the first question you need to ask yourself, and this may seem a little bizarre, number one, but this is where it all starts. Where do I live? Now what does that have to do with anything? Well, in economics there's a term, cost of living. And cost of living is gonna dictate everything else that I'm gonna fill up here and it's a crucial component in terms of whether or not you should be going and starting to trade full time. What do I mean by cost of living? Well, if you live in California, if you live in New York City, uh, there's a lot of people that I know from Canada up in Toronto, very expensive. Those places cost a lot. You know, you, you, you can buy a, a pretty decent sized house in the Midwest, and then you move out to California or New York City or you know, Toronto, and that house is probably not even a house, it's probably an apartment maybe even just a one bedroom apartment, if that. The point being, certain places are gonna dictate your cost of living. And if you have a higher cost of living, well then that's gonna dictate this next step, and that is personal living expenses. Now what do I mean by personal living expenses? Well, what does it take you to keep food on the table and the lights on? So what are those numbers? If you're saying, you know, I actually, I don't know what those numbers are. Well, you better get one of these in a place ASAP, a budget. You need to figure out what it costs you to survive, literally. What is it costing you to keep food in your belly and to not be living out on the street? Because last time I checked, cardboard boxes on the street don't have internet access. So I guess you could pick up a cell phone and, and, and be calling with your broker, but you gotta make sure that you can pay your bills. And again, that's gonna be a function of hair. You know, food in New York City is a little bit more expensive than food's gonna be in, let's say, Kansas City, Missouri. And I say that because that's where I used to live, very low cost of living, and I absolutely loved it there. So you need to know your personal living expenses. If you don't have a budget, and if you don't think a budget sounds fun or don't wanna do a budget, then seriously stop right now, because if you wanna be your own boss, think about it, you are running a business. And if you don't have your personal numbers in line, there's no way you're gonna be a good boss and be a good CEO of your business. What type of business? Well, your trading business. You are going full-time, so you better learn how to, or you better learn the numbers and you better learn to like to learn the numbers because that's an absolutely critical point. Next part, what are your business expenses gonna be? Again, yes, you are gonna be running a business. So you're gonna have a platform, you're gonna have uh, maybe broker fees, you're gonna have uh, data fees. There's all sorts of different fees out there uh, you can I have get it extravagant. You can try to keep them as small as possible. Uh, for me, for example, I have a broker, but I don't use my broker's charts. I use a third party for charts. So therefore, that is a cost that I have to pay every month. Now, if I decided to use my broker's charts, I could save that cost. But for me, within the business numbers, it just makes sense for me to use the third party. So you need to know your business expenses. Again, oh, but I don't want to do a budget. That sounds like a bunch of work. Well, then just stop. You're not going to be your own boss. Let your boss deal with the numbers and work the, the budgets and all that stuff, and you don't have to worry about it. But if you want to get into the business world, be your own boss, you better have these budgets prepared. And then finally, this is the key thing right here. At minimum, 
you're gonna want six months of these expenses just sitting in the bank account as your cushion. What do I mean by that? Why does, uh, you know, why does that matter? Well, let's just say for example that, I don't know, just to keep the math easy, this is $1,000, this is $1,000. So you have $2,000 per month that you have to you know, keep food in your belly, keep your internet, all that stuff, keep the lights on. So 2,000 times six is gonna be $12,000. So before you even think about trading, you better have $12,000 just sitting in your bank account ready to go. Why is this cushion so important? Well, from a psychological perspective, if you're just trying to pay the rent, trying to put food on the table, trying to pay so you can keep your internet service, your mind is not gonna work right, you're gonna start forcing trades, you're gonna start doing stupid things, and it's just not gonna work out. I hear it all the time. People say, yeah, I'm going full time. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna try this, you know, I just got laid off, so now I'm gonna do the trading thing. And could it possibly happen? Yeah, there's some exceptions, but the most part is it just doesn't work because people are just, you know, I, I gotta pay, I gotta pay. But think about it, in this situation, you don't have to pay because you have six months of your expenses set aside. So there is no pressure from that perspective. Now, some people may be thinking, ah, six months, that's a little, well, then you can change it to whatever you want. Some people would say a year. I would probably personally say, hey, you know what? Set aside one year's worth of expenses. Now you may be thinking, well, that means I gotta save up. That's gonna take that much longer? Yeah, like I said, this is not overnight. Look at it like this. While you save up to get six months, 12 months, just keep on paper trading, keep on practicing, keep on studying. And when you get to that point where it actually makes sense, you're gonna have all sorts of paper trading, all sorts of learning, all sorts of experience under your belt. I'm not saying you can't trade during this time. I'm just saying that if you're gonna go full time and have this be the source of your income, you better have a cushion in place or else psychologically you're gonna rip yourself apart because it's just gonna be way too much stress, way too much pressure, all deriving from, I got the mortgage payment, I got the water bill, I got the gas bill. You know, you don't want anybody asking you, did you pay the gas bill? You don't want anything like that. Uh, if you know what movie quote that's from, put it down in the comment section. But uh, you know, you wanna make sure that you can pay the bills and keep your mind right so you can focus on the rules and systems that you have put in, into place. So keep that in mind and you know, get that cushion, build that cushion. It's not an overnight thing, uh, but as you save up, then you're gonna have more time. You're, gonna, you're not gonna have any choice. You're gonna have to use that more time while you save up to keep on studying and working hard and just you know, fine tuning your systems and strategies. If you found this video helpful, I'd like for you to do a couple of things. If you're watching this on claytrader.com, click one of those share buttons, leave a comment down below. I like to hear from people also on YouTube. Click the like button, uh, share it, leave those comments. I, I wanna hear from people. Maybe you have some sort of experience with going full time. Maybe you have another type of metric you like to use. Please share that below. Uh, I by no means am proclaiming this is the only way to do it, but I think anybody with experience would agree that you gotta have some sort of cushion factor or you're just gonna psychologically destroy yourself with all the, I gotta pay, I gotta pay type uh, you know, pressures that your mind is gonna create for yourself. So get out there, put together a budget first off. Uh, you know, sorry for you people that live in New York City or Toronto or California or wherever uh, you know, the other expensive living places around the world are. Uh, depending on where you live, it, it's gonna either be easier or harder to become a trader because that's what's influencing the rest of this. But get out there, put together your budgets, look at the numbers and be realistic with yourself.